Welcome to the Bosch Mobility Experience. I've come to Boxberg in Germany where uh, Bosch is showcasing all of its technology advancements uh, that will make a better, safer future for all of those commuters uh, who use uh, the roads, public roads, for commuting to work, for vacation or just to get to somewhere. And uh, these solutions, well, they're so, so far ahead of its time. It's absolutely fascinating to see what's happening in terms of technology development. I'm here right now at uh, the Connected Cars Pavilion and right behind me is one of those examples that showcases brilliantly and I've already seen this but it's just absolutely brilliant to see how connected cars will connect both your home and your lifestyle to one particular uh, unit. Uh, let me take you to this whole thing. It's a bit exhaustive but I think you will be absolutely fascinated. This is Jetsons. Remember that family? Well, this is it happening right here in 2017, getting ready for the next decade. Just watch what happens. Connected cars could use multiple actions to communicate. These could be voice commands At home, a rain shower is forecast or gaze control where a camera follows the movement of your eyes or gesture control where hand movements are used to operate functions rather than having to physically use a touch screen. At home, okay. a rain shower is forecast and your window is open. Should I shut the window blind? And essentially the car has detected that a window has been left open at my house. I can now shut that window while just sitting right here in my car. And well there, your home is protected from the environment just sitting in your car on your way to some place. So we've just seen how uh, the automated, uh, the autonomous mode comes into play. But uh, more importantly, and another step of uh, connected cars essentially is uh, passing on your profile, your preferences from your vehicle. We've taken it from our smart homes into our smart vehicle and from our smart vehicles, we're transferring it to other smart devices, uh, namely a smart cycle and of course another smart home where you've got an assistant to help you with other functions. Mikey, please send me some seasonal recipes. All of this continues to maintain the same profile, your same preferences, uh, your, your favorite choices and uh, carries all that forward. This is what the connected world is coming to. It makes sure that uh, all of the choices that you've made in your life stay with you every part of your journey. So now that we've sent our preferences from uh, our autonomous car, from our connected car to our house, to our cabin, uh, we've gotten onto the we've gotten onto the next mode of transport, which is using a cycle to get to your cabin up there in the woods, in the wilderness. And of course, again, the cycle has got uh, all the navigation, all the maps uh, embedded into it. That has that has been transferred from the car to the cycle. And Stefan, now this is going to take us to our next destination. Right. We see now uh, from the car over the cloud to the Nyon um, cluster. And then I can see how my personal configuration, my target location and also my home zone, which I defined at home for the cabin, will be loaded. And then the navigation will start and guide us the last mile to our uh, cabin. So and as soon as we reach the uh, area of our cabin, we are asked to start the coming home sequence. So we will do so. That means we prepare the cabin for our arrival, means we open the window blinds, we switch on the lights, we switch off the alarm, we send the, set the household appliances from away in coming home mode, we load the music we have listened in the car to the cabin and we make also our kitchen assistant Mikey ready so that we are, get a warm welcome when we arrive at the cabin. Welcome home. The cabin is prepared for your weekend stay.
In about a decade from now, we're going to have cars driving by themselves on roads in Europe and in North America and several other places around the world. Automated technology is developing rapidly, but what does that mean? It means taking the driver out of the driving situation and letting the car judge for itself, taking its own decisions how to get you to your destination. Now, we are here at uh, the Boxburg Mobility Experience, at the Bosch Mobility Experience, and uh, we are getting an example of what automated technology exactly means. What does it, uh, ex what does it feel like inside a car when you take your hands off the steering wheel and let the car do all the driving. So we're approaching the automated driving part now. Available. The car signals to us that I can act now activate the system. I will push the two buttons and the car is now in control. So as you can see the human machine interface now changed to the blue scheme. Uh, the road is blue, the A signals that it's an automated mode and the steering wheel is in blue as well. This is the moment where I could check my mail my calendar, read the news, because the system is in control. And now as i back in manual mode, one challenge is this, I've been driving for a long time in automated mode, yeah. potentially, is that I may forget that I am in charge. And that's when you get a chime that tells me detects that I'm actually distracted. I'm looking at the screen, I'm oh, talking okay. to you. Yeah. I should be focusing on the road. So if I look back on the road, it's fine, but it can actually see if I'm paying attention or not. And the way it does it is it checks my gaze with the camera. So you can see if okay. I start looking to the screen, yeah, it'll shift you can see my eyes actually looking to the side. And you can hear the chime come on. Standing here right now, 2017, what is the state, let me start with connected cars, what is the state of connected cars as of now? Well, first of all, it's no problem to connect all cars uh, which our customers want to be connected. We have the technology, we have the technology connect, we can also provide even an IoT, an internet of things, yes. cloud, yes. Uh, to, to uh, introduce services uh, for, for app applicant, uh, applications and so on. So connectivity from a physical standpoint is probably uh, is possible from, from now on. Uh, the question is how people communicate with the car uh, and uh, this can done by, uh, by voice of course, but also by gestures or even by touching physical things. So uh, this is the next step to introduce uh, whatever is possible that people can easily communicate with the car without being uh, without being distracted from the uh, from traffic. I think uh, the speed is this what we need uh, because uh, a car is an invest. It's not like a smartphone which you uh, constantly can change uh, on a half year or, or a, a year a cycle. A car is different to that, and for that the speed is uh, the speed is enough, uh, and the car buyers are not necessarily only the young ones, but also the uh, the older ones like me or. Not you, you are too young for that. <laughs> but don't you, don't you think that that's essentially what you're making? You're making cars into smartphones where people are you know, more concerned about uh, how to communicate with your homes or with, uh, with your other devices and things like that, where the driving essentially is left to, and to a universe uh, you know, that, uh, that you have nothing to do with. This is, a, this is definitely a, a challenge uh, because as people deal with other things than driving, this will become dangerous. And for that, we have to provide measures to improve safety uh, of the safety of the car for the car driver and for the other participants in the traffic as well. And this directly brings us to automation because uh, from our point of view, this is a very, very difficult matter uh, we have to deal with. Uh, this uh, to be to be 
distracted from traffic because you concentrate of anything else.